Hi, this is the fifth and last tutorial about custom shapes in Photoshop. Last time we ended with this rusty stop sign. If you'd like to watch that tutorial, there's a link to it in the description for this one. So the stop sign's made by using vector masks on a rusty material. There is one mask for the red color and another one for the white color. This is what the vector masks look like in the layer panel. You have the little black lines where you have your paths, the white areas where the layer shows, and the gray areas where it doesn't. Of course, with paths, there's no partial transparency. You can reduce the opacity of the entire mask if you have CS4 or higher by selecting it and clicking on the mask panel, and then you can use the density slider, and that reduces the density of the whole thing. But you can't reduce the transparency of certain parts. It's either there or it isn't. However, you can use vector masks with layer masks. All you have to do is click on the new mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel, and that will put a layer mask in between your layer and your vector mask, if you don't already have one there. And once you've got it, you can, for instance, get the gradient tool, make sure the gradient set to black to white, hold down the shift key to constrain the motion, and just drag up and fade out the bottom portion of your stop sign here. The vector mask will mask the layer mask as well as the layer. I'm going to hide the rusty white layer, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on both the layer mask and the vector mask to temporarily hide them so that you can see what's going on. And I'm going to click on the layer mask to hide the paths as well. So reading from left to right, we have the red rust texture. And if I click on this thumbnail, you can see that that is masking the red rust texture. Where it's black on the mask, it's masked, and where it's white, it is showing. And now if I hold down the shift key and click on the vector mask, you can see once again that the vector mask is masking both of them. But this checkerboard isn't very interesting. So I'm going to show the rusty white again, and I'm going to enable the traffic layer. Now, that looks a lot better inside the stop sign, but I don't like all this junk on the outside. So I certainly don't want it down here where you can see that it doesn't actually get to the bottom of the image and it looks really bad and sloppy. I'd like to have a mask that's masking this. Can I do that? And the answer is sure, it's easy. All you have to do is hold down the command key and click on the thumbnail for the mask, because even though it's a vector mask, it's like any other mask, you can load it as a selection by holding down command, control on a PC, and clicking on the thumbnail. And then just click on the traffic layer, and click on the new mask icon, and there you have your mask. I'm going to hold down the option key, that's Alt on a PC, and click on the mask so you can see just the mask by itself. But there's a little bit of a problem, because that puts the layer mask, which is a raster mask, right up to the edge of the vector mask. So if I print it at a high resolution, I might get a ragged edge there where you could see some of the pixelation. It would be better to have the layer mask inside the edge, say at the inner edge of this red border here. So I'm going to undo this mask with Command Z, that's Control Z on a PC, and I'm going to drop the selection with Command D or Control D. And let's try this a slightly different way. First I'm going to enable the um, paths by clicking on the vector mask. And I'm going to zoom in by holding down the Command key and the space bar and drawing a marquee, and now I need to get the arrow tool. Remember, this is a path, and you can only select paths with the arrow tool. So I'm going over here, and I'm going to get the white arrow, which is the direct selection tool, so I can select part of the path. Now we've done this before. All I have to do is hold down the Option key, that's Alt on the PC, and click on the path that I want, and that selects that subpath. Notice that it has a little black square here at all of the corners. The paths that are not selected have hollow squares. They're not filled at all. And now that I have that, I'm going to hold down the command key and the spacebar. That's control spacebar on the PC and tap 0 to fit the image to the screen. And I'm going to copy that path with command C. That's control C on a PC. Then I'm going to go up here to my paths panel, double click so that I can see them. I'm going to make a new path by using the create new path button at the bottom of the panel. And then I'm just going to paste with command V or control V on a PC. And now that I have that path in there, I can hold down the command key, that's control on the PC, and click on the path thumbnail just like I would on a mask thumbnail and load the path as a selection. And after that, it's just a matter of clicking on the layer and clicking on the new mask button. And now I have my mask that masks just the stop sign and nothing inside of it. If I hold down the option key, I can click there on the mask thumbnail and you can see. But now that's a raster mask that's not going to cause any problems when printed as a vector. Okay, I'd like to show you something else, but I want to move to a different image to do that, and I'd like to take this whole stop sign path vector mask layer thing with me. So I'm going to click to enable the path so that I can see them again, 
Now I have the white arrow, see, it's a white. I need to have the black arrow. So I can get it temporarily by holding down the command key, that's control on a PC, and that toggles between the white and black arrows. And now that I have it, I can click on the path any place, and it selects the entire path. Notice that all of the little um, corners are filled in with little black squares. So now I can just copy it with Command-C, that's Control-C on a PC, move to the traffic that I wanted to show you. I took this picture a few days ago in Detroit. And then I can just click once on the mask icon to make a layer mask, and once to make a vector mask, and paste. And I have my vector mask masking out my layer just like that. Now I want this to be larger and I'd like to move it over to the side, so I'm going to go into Free Transform. Since I have a path active, all I need to do is hold down the Command key, that's Control for the PC, and tap T like I always do to go into Free Transform, and it will Free Transform the path. And now I can drag it to the side. I can hold down the Shift key and resize proportionally by dragging on the corner and get it the way I want it. And I'm going to center it up on that little black car there. And then double click to accept the transformation. Just click on the vector mask to drop the paths. And there we are. I don't need the layer mask, so I'm going to right click on it and choose Delete Layer Mask from the drop down menu. And then I'm going to copy this layer by holding down the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and dragging this layer below it. And that puts a new copy of the layer underneath the layer I was working on. I don't need a copy of the vector mask, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete the vector mask this time. Now you can't see that that's actually any different, but it is. And in order to show that it is, I'm going to use a hue and saturation layer. So I'm going down here to the Pattern Adjustment Layers, and I'm going to choose Hue and Saturation which opens up this dialog. If I close paths, I can open layers because I don't have much real estate here so that you can see what's going on. And now I'm just going to move the saturation down to um, almost nothing and increase the lightness. And when I do, that fades out that layer so that I'll be able to put type over here without any trouble at all. And you can see where I have the vector mask on the layer above it really easily. But it doesn't quite pop the way I want it to. So I'm going to put some layer styles on it. You can put layer styles on layers with vector masks just like you can with any other masks. So I click on it, and then I'm just going to, I'm going to close this because I need more room here. I just click on the FX that's at the bottom of the layer panel, and I'm going to choose a drop shadow. That opens up the great big layer style dialog box. Now this is CS5, which means I can make my own defaults, and I have made them to save time. So there's the drop shadow. And now I'm going to put on a bevel and emboss by clicking on that one. And I would like to put on an inner shadow, no, an outer glow. Use it as a soft stroke. And you can do that because I have set this to multiply and I'm using black instead of the default, ordinary default, which is screen and white. But I've made a new default, so I can do that. Click OK. And I'm going to click on the vector mask to drop the path so you don't have to look at them. And there we go. And now I could put anything that I wanted to all of my text over here on the right, and it would look great. So hopefully you're now familiar enough with custom shapes and vector masks that you can use this as a springboard to start exploring and coming up with wonderful things on your own. Until next time, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.